Hey there everyone, my name is Tony Troxell. Welcome to Introduction to 3D Printing for the Hobbyist. This is a presentation I put together for the Anderson Public Library in Anderson, Indiana on September 28th, 2022. And I thought people might be interested in seeing it here on the YouTubes. So, let's dive on in. As we roll into stuff, let me introduce myself. My name is Tony Troxell. I am a prop and costume replicator. I've been doing it since 1992. I am a former Hollywood effects artist. I have worked on such projects as the Tick television series with Patrick Warburton, Blade 2, and a little bit of work on Stephen King's Dreamcatcher, enough that I count it. I'm also a force, former licensed prop builder. I have worked on Battlestar Galactica Blasters for Guardian Entertainment back in 2000, 2001. I used to work with Lucas Francis Studios on Terminator 2 endoskeletons, endo arms, and alien xenomorph heads. You know, the long heads, clear skull, mouth going out. Ah, yeah, those guys. Um, I'm one of the founding members of the Rebel Legion, an international costuming group recognized by both Lucasfilm and Disney that covers the Rebels, the good guys. And most importantly, I came in second place in the Fry's Electronics Halloween Costume Contest in 2006. Now, why are we here? We are here to talk about 3D printing basics for the hobbyists. So we're talking, you know, very base, here's what you need to know to get started. We're gonna talk about types of printers, how to find your files, how to prep your files for printing, you know, actually printing those files, and post-processing your prints, which I still think I really should have thought that through, because you don't do that sort of alliteration when you're doing a recording, but anyway. Moving on, types of printers. There are two major types of printers we're going to be talking about. These are the easiest things, easiest printers for somebody to get at the consumer level. The first one is a fused deposition modeling or FDM printer. This is what a lot of people think about. And then you have the stereolithography or SLA printer, which is printing with resin. First up on the FDM printing, this is the kind that melts plastic and it builds pieces layer by layer. Just goes around and lays down layers of material. Um, you print everything from PLA, which is very commonly used filament, to carbon fiber. Not something I see many people doing, but I have seen it at um, some of the 3D printing events like uh, the Midwest Rep Rat Festival or MRF. That's held up in northern Indiana. Um, this is what most people think about when they think 3D printing. Like when you're seeing all the news articles about, you know, 3D printing a house, it's the layers of concrete just getting laid down one on top of another. And that's kind of what the FDM printing is, except it's with plastic instead of concrete. Now, both methods are going to have strengths and weaknesses. And for FDM, strengths are you can print large pieces, you know, fairly quick. It's, you know, it's still, I've pl printed some costume pieces that have taken two to three days, but it's still quicker and easier than trying to make a mold and then run pieces out of the mold. It's fairly inexpensive to get started. I mean, you can get a basic, you know, if you're used to tinkering with stuff, you can get a basic printer for a hundred, 150 bucks. They're really good for prototyping. Say you've got an idea that you want to, you know, you need to get out of your head and you want to see it in three dimensions. You can model it in something like Blender or um, Fusion 360. Get it out on the printer and you can start actually seeing how that is, you know, in real life. And so you can start seeing what its strengths and weaknesses are, things like that. Now, of course, there's also weaknesses. The main one being most hobbyist parts can melt or warp really easy. Um, many a horror story from costumers that have printed full sets of like Mandalorian armor or something like that left in a car on a warm day and it's all been warped and melted and pretty much ruined. Um, doesn't catch much detail. And if you are looking to use it as a final piece, it takes a lot of work to make it a smooth surface. And we'll go into that in a little bit. Now for resin printing, it's going to be almost... The opposite motion. Unlike FDM printing, which builds layers of material to create an object, resin printing uses a resin that's activated by ultraviolet light. Instead of building layers up, the print bed moves up out of the resin vat as each layer is flashed by the light under the vat. So you've got this vat 
of resin right here and the build plate actually lowers down into it. When um, it starts running, it'll flash UV light in the shape of whatever you're trying to print and it'll hold that there until that resin cures and it'll turn off and it'll raise ever so slightly and then it'll flash again and again and again. It's another building up layer by layer, but it's a lot smoother than the uh, FDM filament printing. So the strengths with resin, it can print incredibly detailed pieces. A lot of people that do Dungeons and Dragons miniatures love getting a resin printer because they can print, you know, all their monsters and all their main characters, everything out and get them painted and just chef's kiss, make them look awesome. Layer lines are very minimal and easy to clean. Um, the plastic sometimes is hard to sand down. You'll have to use a lot of filler to get it smoothed out. Resin sands down real easy. In fact, you gotta be really careful so you don't take too much off of it. And it doesn't matter if it's one item or 20, it'll take the same amount of time to print. Because once again, talking about how the different printers work with the FDM, putting the layers of plastic, it's gonna do one layer here, then one layer here, then one layer here, then one layer here, and then go back for the next layer, the next layer. It's gonna be going you know, for four different pieces. With the SLA, the resin, it's gonna flash all four of those at once, and then it's gonna raise and it's gonna flash all four of them again, and it's gonna raise and it's gonna flash all four of them. So you, you, I think you get the idea there. It's, it's doing everything at once with the resin as opposed to you know piece by piece with the uh, FDM. And of course, it does have its weaknesses. First off, the UV resin is incredibly toxic. Um, I am recording this in my office, and whenever I'm running my resin printer in here, I am not in here. The window is open with a fan venting out. There's an air purifier over there, and I keep the door shut with a towel stuck under it so nothing comes out of the office. It might be a little bit of overkill, but you've really only got one set of lungs. you got to take care of them. Cleanup takes a lot of labor. I will go into that in a little bit. Um, and printers that make larger offer items are still not inexpensive. There are printers, like the printer I have is good for Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and small detail parts for props. That's why I bought it. Um, there are printers out there now that you can print actual pieces of helmets or pieces of armor. Um, those a little bit out of my price range and out of most people's price range as you're getting started. So, going into how to actually print because i mean this is why you're watching this video i do believe I mean, you're not here just for my smiling face so first off you're going to need a file and you're going to be able to find all these links in the notes attached underneath this video but there are many places that you can find files on the internet either for free or pay for them and you know what, if someone's asking money for it, go ahead and pay it. Pay your artists. They did all the hard work for you, so all you have to do now is print it out. But some of these places are Thingiverse. It is an older site. A lot of people are starting to bail from it because it's an older site. They don't take good care of it. But you can still find some good files there. My Mini Factory. Um, really good for finding Dungeons & Dragons miniatures. A good mix of both free and paid files. Uh, printables. This is a fairly new 3D printing site. It's put on by uh, Prusa Printers, which is one of the just, if I had the money, that's what I would be having instead of the ones I have right now. But uh, they're starting to take the place of Thingiverse as the place where a lot of people are going to put their models and find their models. Etsy, believe it or not, a lot of creators will put their work up on Etsy. So you can go there and do a search for like Star Trek STL, because uh, stereolithography, stereolith that's the type of file that you use for 3D printing. You can go look for those, and you can find a lot of good stuff there. Patreon. A lot of modelers will have a Patreon account where you just give them X amount of money a month, and they get you X number of files a month. And it's anything from miniatures to movie props to costume bits, what have you. Colts 3D is another site that has both a mixture of paid and free models, and they have some really good stuff there. CG Trader, once again, a mixture 
actually they're mainly paid models but i've gotten a lot of really nice star trek props through that site and i've got a wish list that's a mile long there are some very very talented makers on there Yegi is more a search engine that browses through all the sites and gives you results and it's not the cleanest it's not the best but it is there as an option and finally social media you know artists like to show off their work people that do 3d models are they're artists and they like to show their stuff off and they'll say hey if you like this drop me a dm and we can talk about you know how much it costs and they're normally very reasonable so that is a good one to check out as well now, of course, there's also creating your own files. This is something I'm still working on, so I don't have much information on it, but I can tell you some of the programs that are used, and that is Fusion 360. In fact, a couple of people, um, such as I Like to Make Stuff and Punish Props, they each have courses on how to use Fusion 360 for general making to just specific prop and costume stuff. And I'll make sure to put those links uh, in the description as well. Not, you know, I'm not getting paid by them or anything. I just have both the courses and they are both very nice and they're both very informative. That's what I'm using to learn the modeling. There is Blender. A lot of people will use that. It's a very common 3D modeling program. And there is Tinkercad, which is a very basic web-based um, program. But I've been able to make very simple items off of that, such as... If I can figure out how to do it, here's a picture of a attempt I did at making a vacuum holder for when I'm sanding. If I could put like a vacuum, my shop vac beside me and see if it'd suck up the dust. I got it to work complete with a uh, piece that screwed into a tripod and the hole is large enough to firmly hold the uh, vacuum, but the entire idea was bad and it didn't work. But it's not the fault of the model. Now. So you've got your file. Now what do you do with it? You slice it. Slicing it is taking that model from, well here, let's go, let's just go ahead and go off of this. Slicing your file adds support material, which we'll talk about in a minute, tells the printer how detailed to make your physical print, how much infill the print should have, which is how much materials in between the walls, and it puts it in the format the printer understands. Uh, many printers will come with their own slicing software, with some, especially a lot of the uh, SLA resin printers, will require to use their slicing software and no one else's. Personally, there are two programs I use most of the time, and that is Cura for um, the filament for the FDM, and Lychee Slicer for resin. Cura is free. Lychee Slicer costs, I think it's like $35, $40 a year. But as you're going to see, I've got some videos coming up and you're going to be able to see exactly how nice some of their settings are. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, run through a video here. Hopefully it'll look good. <laughs> the video on the video. So, But what we have here, um, right here is the Ultimaker Cura. And so we're going to open that up. And unfortunately, my setup is I was capturing this screen right here. I've got this screen right here that everything opened up on. But right here, you have Cura. And this is your print bed. It shows you how large your bed is. And for example, this is one of my smaller printers, the Creality CR6SE. And um, I'm over trying to find a file for it currently. So while you know past Tony is doing that and making future Tony sit here awkwardly, I'm going to give you some information like the little uh, red and blue lines in the lower left corner. That is the lower left front of your printer. So if you want to know how it's going to face, there you go. Now, the file we chose is a Delta from Star Trek Discovery, their version of the Enterprise. And this is a very, very simple model, flat bottom. Um, the blue shows that everything is flat on the build plate. The red shows there's areas that might need some support because it's just going to be printing over thin air. So what we're going to do is we're going to, going to go into the print settings and we're going to choose what quality we want to do the print at. Um, you can do a really super quality, which is very thin layer lines that catches more detail. Or you can go a low quality, which is just thicker lines. You're trying to get it out there 
good for a lot of armor and helmets because you have to do work smoothing them out anyway. So it uses a little less material, takes a lot less time. Um, the amount of walls, those are very important. That's how many layers of thickness there is before you hit the uh, infill. So if you have it too thin, you're going to sand right through it as you're cleaning it up. Um, infill, as I mentioned before, that's how much filament you have or how many layers of filament and stuff you have filling in between your walls. Um, I like to, I normally just stick about 15, uh, 15 percent, um, material. You want to always check your material, see what kind of temperature it requires to melt it. Going to go down to support materials. Now this doesn't really require much in the way of support. I go ahead and do it. So those red circles on the bottom have something filling them, but what this does, it keeps, if you're having something that's printing out over into thin air, it keeps it from just drooping. It gives it something to print on as it's higher up. Um, build plate adhesion. There's a couple of different methods. There's a skirt, which does a line around the piece before it starts spraying to make sure the filament's ready to go. There's a brim, which kind of puts extra material out from the bottom of the piece itself, helps it stick a little better. And then there's the raft, which, Say you're printing three of these, it'll put a layer of plastic on the build plate and then print these on top of it. So that way, if it works very well, if you have something that has very small can, um, surface connection to the build plate, it keeps it from falling over. So when I slice this, it looks like it's going to take about two hours and two minutes. Does not take much filament. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to rename it. And I like renaming my files where I have an idea what the item is and how long it'll take to print. So I can look at the screen as it's printing and go, oh, so it says it's going to take three hours. It's been printing for two. It's got about an hour left. It's not exact, but it's nice. And then I'll just export that into a memory card or a file on my computer and it'll be ready to print. Now, as I said before, there is, there are going to be things that you print that you're going to require things like supports. And so that's what Tony is doing right now. Past Tony is currently finding one of those items. Current Tony has been talking pretty steadily for the last 20 minutes. So he's going to take a quick drink of water. Okay, and past Tony is still taking his time, but that's what we're going to show here is how to do slice a piece that has, um, that's going to require supports. And if I remember correctly, the piece that we're going to slice might be very similar to the handle on this Star Wars uh, blaster prop right here we're going to be doing this piece right here. And in fact, there we go. And so you see it was able to, it just came down on that rounded bottom. And so the first thing we're going to do is get it rotated around so the flat surface on the top is what's touching the bottom. And you can either manually rotate it, or there's an option where you can just click on a surface and it'll automatically go onto the build plate. That's the version I like using. Um, so, but as you'll be able to see, once I'm done showing the different angles and how to do this, there is those red marks show areas that are pretty much printing into thin air. And so those are going to be areas we want to have support on or else there's going to be drooping plastic lines and it's going to be a lot to clean up or and you might not even be able to clean it up. It might just cause the print to fail. So we're going to go in and we're going to mess with the settings again. We're going to do this at a lower quality than the badges because it's just a general piece. Um, and we're going to add the supports. And there's going to be two types of supports that Cura has. There's standard supports and tree supports. We're going to just look at the standard supports first. And these are just the, the you know pieces that build up off the build plate. And they take care of like that uh, curve there. Um, but inside those screw holes, it's just going to put support material in there to support itself. And so you're going to have to dig that out and maybe mess up some of the filament. 
So instead, we're going to try out the tree supports. And this is a much more organic flow to it where, you know, when this is done printing, all you have to do is snap off one side and it takes all the support material out of the hole, snap off the other side, snap off, snap off the back, and you're good to go. It's not something I use often, but in the when it comes to something like a blaster where it's got those holes in the side, I have a tendency to use tree supports more than the standard ones. Um, but, you know, and once again, once you're done slicing, you're just going to rename your file however you'd like to name it. And you are going to then put it onto a drive and you're good to go. Now, that was how to slice a file for an FDM printer. Next up is how to slice a file for an SLA or resin printer using Lychee Slicer. So we're going to go ahead and start this up. And we're going to go ahead. I've got Lychee Slicer. It is just right above Cura, right there by the Prusa Slicer that I mentioned. And we'll go ahead and get that opened up. And it'll always check to see if you have any previous jobs that didn't finish before it gives you something new. And so you're going to add a file. Just go ahead and drag and drop. So past Tony will remember that, oh yeah, I don't have to go to open up something. I can just go to the folder off screen and drag it on here. And we're, once again, we're going to play around with those uh, Star Trek badges because they fit on this very small build plate. This is the printer that I have. And like I said, it's not huge. It's only about, you know, that big. But it's large enough to do a Star Trek badge. So what we need to do is we need to select the badge so you can see, you know, how it's sitting on the build plate. And honestly, you could go ahead and try to print it just like this. The problem is if something is flat on the build plate, many times the suction as it pulls up will cause it to stick to the bottom of the vat and it's not, yeah, it just doesn't come out well. So what I like to do is use their magic supports to go ahead and change it around to make it work a little better. And you'll see this because it has those ramped sides. It won't stay down as easily. But you still, a lot of people like tilting them because it allows the resin to slide and all that. And so here we'll go ahead and do that. And now you can see that these are all, they have a ton of supports on them. So hopefully everything, nothing will be printing out into midair and they're ready to go. But we still want to check them. No piece of software is perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to prepare and there's a um, toggle at the side that when you move it, it'll show you the layers of how things are built. And so you're going to go to the very bottom and you're going to slowly start moving up. And you're going to see the orange as a support. When the blue starts, that's going to be the actual print or the white. And right there, we have the print starting for the bottom of the badge, but if you look, there is no support under it. So it's just going to be trying to print in midair. And because remember, this is going this way this time, it's not going like this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to those pieces that are currently floating in midair and put some support material under them so there is something for them to print on. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put a little bit of support there. And we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of support on this one. And we should be good to go there. So we will continue. And we'll keep watching. And since we have that problem on the one side, we're going to definitely keep it on the other side. And sure enough, there's those bottom pieces that don't have a support where it's going to actually start flashing the resin and printing it. And, you know, right there is a piece that you could almost miss, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to scroll in, zoom in and make sure that gets taken care of, or we'll just get it taken care of. Past Tony, you really should have zoomed in so people could see it. But anyway, and we're going to just keep scrolling up now to make sure everything is good. Everything is fine. And, 
it is. So now we're going to go over to export the file, which is putting it into the format the printer will be able to read. And we're going to make sure we want to have it set to each resin is going to have its own properties. You want to go ahead and set it so like a clearer resin will need a different amount of time to cure than a very solid black resin, for example, or a solid white resin versus a clear green. But what you see here, the rendering, these are each flash, each layer. Those uh, numbers that are scrolling up really quick is the number of times it's going to flash that UV light to make this go from liquid to a solid. And so it's showing you the process of how it's going to go. And we're at 900 and now we're at a thousand. So and it'll finish the process and it'll let you know, here's how much resin it's going to take. Here's approximately how much it's going to cost. And here's about how much time it's going to take to print this. And because the, the screen on this isn't as easy to read, I normally just make a note on a uh, clipboard I keep beside it so I know how long it's going to take and just let it go. But now I just go, I could just go ahead and save it on a folder on my computer and it is done and good to go. And that's pretty much, and that's why I like the lychee slicers. A lot of times you'll have to physically go in and add those supports yourself the, or you'll, the software will try doing it for you. And it does a very, very poor job where this just had a couple of extra supports you had to add in and everything was good. So that's why I like paying for and using the lychee slicer. Once again, I'm not paid by them. I just enjoy their software. It works very well for me. Now you've got your file ready to go. Now let's actually use that printer. First, you're going to put the files on the printer using either an SD card. You're going to hook a computer directly up to the printer. Some printers have built in Wi-Fi. There's additions you can make using a Raspberry Pi to just put the files over to it many ways to do it. Personally, I just use an SD card. You check your printer. You want to make sure the bed is level and clean. And this is applicable for both types of printers. Do you have plenty of filament or resin? Is, if you're printing a large item, do you have a full roll of filament? If you're printing some, a large item in resin, is your vat full or do you only have a little bit in there? Um, is your filament loaded? Is your vat full? Um, Yes, you can. There are times that you can get everything set up and like you've started loading the filament, but you haven't done it all the way because you got distracted and you start printing and you realize nothing's coming out. So you that's believe it or not, that is something you want to check. Make sure you did actually load the filament. Now, once you have all that checked, everything's loaded, ready to go. You start your print and you watch as an incredibly slow version of a Star Trek replicator turns your file into something physical. So, yay, it's done. It's, that's it, right? No, no, not, not quite. For FDM, once your print is finished, you are going to want to pop the print off the build plate with a flat object like a, uh, like a paint scraper sort of thing or a spatula. Um, they have very thin ones. I'll try to get an image right here. And that's what I normally use. But you can also get flexible build plates that you just take a metal plate off magnetically and it's just flexible steel and you just go pop and the piece comes right off. But you got to wait for it to cool down first because the heat's keeping it. The, the, uh, it's normally 60 degrees Celsius. And that keeps the plastic on there pretty good, especially if it's glass. Um, once you get it popped off, you just carefully remove that any of the support material that's on there and you're good to go. With resin, resin, like I said earlier, one of the weaknesses, it's very labor intensive. First things first, you want to put on a gloves and respirator because remember toxic, you're going to get your materials ready. Items like paper towels, trash bag, an alcohol bath to wash any excess resin off the piece, a curing chamber to make sure everything is fully cured. You don't have any uncured resin on the piece. A protective mat so when you're pulling things out, if there's any resin dripping, you're not getting it on the carpet or on the floor. Then you're going to remove the print from the build plate, very similar way to how you're going to take one off an FDM plate. Uh, once again, I've got a flexible build plate on mine as well that I just pull it off there and pop it off and it's good to go. You're going to wash the print off with alcohol because there's excess resin remaining on there. And if you don't wash it off when you cure it, that'll just stay on there and it'll be lumpy and not look good. 
you're going to remove the support material, but you're going to be very careful at this point because since everything's not fully cured, it's a little bit more fragile than the FDM prints. In fact, there's times where I was trying to force something off and I've tweaked a piece a little bit. It was still soft enough that I was able to twist it and I had to reprint a piece because it was no longer flat. It wouldn't work the way I needed it to. Then you're going to cure it with a UV light. You can either have a curing station that gives you a basket for you to wash stuff in and then you put something in the UV lights hit it and while it's turning around a turntable you can put it out in the sun because that's UV light or a lot of people when they're starting out just get some uh, UV lights a uh, solar turntable and put it in Amazon box because you're going get, to get a lot of them because you're buying 3D printing stuff through them that's been coated with uh, that you've lined the inside with aluminum foil because that gives all the reflection, keeps everything right there on the piece in the middle, and it, it does a fairly good job of curing. So now, now are you done? For many of your prints, yeah, clean them up and they're good to hold something like your cell phone or portable game system, you know, something like this for the Steam Deck. You know, the game system goes right here. You've got a spot here to put your... Um, docking station you know got stuff like that i've got you know, a cell phone switch holder right here you know just there's practical stuff you make that does not require any finishing but if you're looking to do something that's for a costume or if you're looking for something that looks polished that's when you're going to really start putting the work in. Now for a resin print, there's no, really not much to it. Once they're secured, there's some light layer lines to sand down, and there might be some small divots from the support material that needs filled in. That's kind of what these white marks are on the, uh, see right about here and here, those white marks are where the uh, um, support material was attached. You can kind of see them right there and there as well. So, but that's pretty much all you have to do with the resin is you get those filled in and then you're good to go. With FDMs though, finishing part these parts is a little bit more work intensive. What we have here is a Bo-Katan jetpack from The Mandalorian. Um, and I was printing, I printed this for a friend and this is everything after it's been printed out. The backpack itself is in four four quarters. I've already glued uh, two of them, so it's just half each now. And I just started going through and first glue it all together. Okay, so this is how I finish prints. Honestly, you go you're on YouTube. If you start looking up how to finish uh, 3D prints, you look at five different uh, videos, and you're going to come up with maybe six or seven different options. This is what works well for me. The first thing I do is I take the piece and I hit it with a 220 grit sandpaper to knock down if there's like any blobs on the surface or anything like that. Get it start, start getting it smoothed out. Then I'm going to cover the piece with a body filler. I like to use a spot glazing putty, um, Bondo, because it's just the easiest available for me. I've seen other people use a spackle. It's worked fairly well. Whatever it is, it, you're putting it on there and you're going to sand most of it off. So what remains is what's left kind of in those grooves. You're going to repeat this process a few more times until you've either sanded down all the lines or you've filled in all the grooves and it's smooth. So this is what the piece looks like with the, uh, after I've done the body filler and the filling in the seams and all that. Once you're done sanding, you give it a good coat of sandable filler primer to see if there's any layer lines left. If so, repeat the previous steps. If not, then you can carry on to painting, which I'm not going to go that in depth on. A painting is its own thing. It's not 3D printing related. There's great, great videos from Odd Viking, Off Earth 3D. Those are two great people that I uh, subscribe to and learn stuff off of on here. So look up their stuff. They're great. But once you're done, hopefully it's going to look more like what you envisioned it to be, like this right here, and less like it was a bunch of layers of plastic melted onto each other. So, you know, you've got the before there where I've got everything kind of taped together and you've got an idea what the pack looks like. And you've got the after, which 
there's a fairly strong resemblance to what you saw on the show, I'd, I, I'd like to think. So, to review, yes, I am almost done. I am almost done. I'm sorry, this was a 45-minute presentation. I'm trying to make it go a little quicker because I know YouTube is... Yeah, nobody wants to watch 40 minutes of video on YouTube. But, to review, we've gone over the types of printers, FDM and resin. How to find your files. You can find them for free. You can buy them. You can make them. How to prep your files for printing. Actually printing those files. Post-processing your prints, which pretty much involves sand, sand, and sand some more. So, this is a part normally live. I'd take any questions, comments, or bad jokes. Just keep them clean. I invite you to go ahead if you have any questions, if you think I've misrepresented anything. Anything like that, please let me know in the comments. Um, I've checked everything. Everything that I've gone over here works very well for me. But everybody has their own methods. Everybody has their own way of doing things. So do you have something better? Do you know somebody that did a better video than this that you, you know, recommend people watching? Hey, go ahead. Let me know in the comments. I will make sure... I responded as long as you're not being a jerk, and it's not going to get deleted. I'm I'm not that type. I'm not, I'm not that big of a channel. Come on now. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for sticking with me as I went through all of this. Once again, my name is Tony. You can find me on Instagram under Geek Building. You can find me on Facebook under Geek Building. And if you need to drop me an email, there's my email address. This is probably the point where I do all the hey, if you like what I do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, whatever. I do one video a month, and it's mainly for practice video editing and recording and trying to screen capture. So if you're interested in watching that, feel free to subscribe. I know the uh, I put stuff up the third Monday of every month. Next month's video will be the talk that I'm doing on the 19th of October, talking about 3D printing and cosplay. So that will be that will be the next video that goes up. But... Hey, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I do appreciate you. Remember, take good care of yourselves and each other. The world sucks out there. Try not to make it suck even more. In fact, you know what? Do what you can do to make it suck a little less, okay? Take good care of yourselves and each other. Bye.